IgG from the time she was a brownie right through and actively involved as a leader in many different sections of the organization but the one in particular that stands out is she served for 14 years as international commissioner so watch out Helena this <laughs> <laughs> might end up going on for longer than, than you had anticipated um, I'm also sure that she wouldn't mind me telling you that she is actually 95 years young oh. <laughs> 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 Well, first of all, um, sister guys, I would like to say how much I've been impressed this afternoon by the, the professionalism of uh, the reports and all that has been done. And I think back to my uh, poor amateur, amateur days when we were doing such simple things. Uh, I remember my first admin job was being secretary to the Court of Honour. And I was told that I would have to keep the minutes. And I came home to my mother and I said, well, what are minutes? I thought minutes were 60 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose, for me, the most fulfilling part was being international commissioner. I really enjoyed that. But I also enjoyed being a ranger captain and a guide captain and a guide lieutenant and a patrol leader. All great fun in their days and I loved it. And I think of today in guiding, I think that probably today the same, uh, the same pressure is on getting people to be guiders. I think probably there's no problem in getting children, but the search for guiders, and I know how, how, how hard this can be, even harder than it used to be, because, you know, nowadays somebody comes in from work and um, she, she, she rushes into a meal and the father's down in the kitchen and she says, well, um, the girl goes tumbling down, bangs, bangs the door, goes out, where on earth is she gone now? She's gone down to the guard station. Oh, oh Lord, what has she done? She's, she has exceeded the speed limit once again. What did I do with her? Oh no, she's gone to be better as a guider. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, says Father, I never knew that sort of thing before. And that's where I think that we're moving on to in, in a way. But the challenge is as great as it ever was, and more so. And I would love to see guiding opened up in the more marginalized areas of our society. And that's where it's going to be hard. I ran a company for a short while for somebody else who uh, ran a company down in a very, a then very underprivileged area of Dublin. And it was so hard for my polite children who'd been in Rathfarnham guys <laughs> and uh, always did what they were told and, did, and it was so difficult working with these guys and it is so much harder and yet, you know, I really do think that that, that is, is, is the challenge lies. If you say, why guiding? Why did we enjoy it so much? I just love my guiding type days. The, the outdoors, the fun of the outdoors. And this today is harder because transportation, urbanization, um, more difficult to find places, no fires here, no something there, you know, the public parks are difficult. And it, it, it is a bigger challenge, more and more that time goes on. And um, I do think that the out of doors is so important. And when I joined guides, I don't think I knew the difference between an oak leaf and a beech leaf. <laughs> and, uh, I afterwards became very, very interested in nature and in natural studies. And it led on from the fact that we had to, to know about six trees or something <laughs> when we were doing the test. Guiding. I think it's terrific. I think the international side, the outdoor side, and to come back to probably the fundamentals of the promise and the law. If uh, the promise and law means so much in our lives. Now, I have a small um, 
a small book from which I read a, 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 pass, a passage every day. And I have in that, the marker in that is the guide law, and uh, which is a, I was given to it by an Australian guide an embroidered thing with the guide law. And it just reminds me of the guide law every day. And at 95 years of age, I still have a lot to learn. <laughs> and you can teach me. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ms. Hamilton Reed. I know you, you, you would like it if anybody had any questions to ask of yes. perhaps what guiding was like um, in your day. We were down in Greystones because my mother had been ill and was advised to live near the sea for a little while. And I thought it was rather more permanent and short of it. And I met, I met two girls one day when I was in shopping or doing something like this. Uh, and she said, they said, you, you, you know, you new to Greystones, you're coming to live here. And I said, well, we're staying here for the winter anyway. So I said, well, we belong to the girl guides when you come along. <laughs> and I said, um, I'm a patrol leader, said Jesse, and uh, that was my beginning with guides. And did I like it? <laughs> and, you know, it was really wonderful. And really, the high, one of the highlights was the utter silence at the time of my enrollment. I've never forgotten it. You, it was, there were 36 guides in the company, I think, at the time. And you could have heard a pin drop when I made my promise. Yeah. And I hope that I've tried to be faithful to it for what? For 81 years I've been a guide. Mm -hmm. oh, well done. So, yes. Any more questions? <laughs> when I was at four world conferences, and I was at an international conference in, at the Shani. And I think I, the thing I would remember most probably was standing on the veranda of the hotel in, in outside Athens when we had the conference in Greece. And I was standing beside the chief guide and she was so abundant and so full of fun and laughter. And I think that probably was one of the highlights. Eileen uh, Beatty and I went out to the to the airport to meet them, and that uh, that long way. I mean, we were to meet the plane was due to come in about one one fifteen or something. You know, pouring rains, very high winds. One one fifteen, one thirty, one forty five, two o'clock, two fifteen, and they said no, the plane hasn't come. And Eileen Beatty and I, both in uniform, sitting there waiting for them to come. That was one of the, that was the, one of the low points of my guiding. And uh, but you know we were so grateful that no one was no one was not only not killed but had no very lasting uh, damage, no brain damage, no spi spinal troubles. It was, it was a miracle. It really was a miracle. The biggest challenge to I uh, to any movement today is to uh, be able to make contact with the unattached children are there. And I would love, I was looking at a TV program about two nights ago, and it was about um, Martin and I's children. And I said, wouldn't I just love to bring guiding to those children? I gathered that you were, and I was going to say this in the beginning, I gathered you were preparing for your centenary tonight by having somebody who was 81 years in the room. And I think that, um, you know, to go back to the fundamental principles of the promise and the law are so important in this secularized age. And, um, you know, it's so important to keep those standards up and to remember our promise. Thank you for allowing us to record it. We'll have it now forever. <laughs> <laughs>